I was mentioning, instead of going to YouTube and, and searching for OOP244, the best is to go to the, the best is to, to, to see the previous lectures on certain topic, go to Farda's note archive, and then pick something, say 2211, that's a long time ago, and then over here find and see member operator helper functions. So you go over here and you click on that one, it, it brings up the, you see, there you go. So it actually shows the video for that one and you can see the notes like, like every other thing. You can find the notes over here for the exact same date and open it up and see exactly. Okay, so everything that I, that I talk about, uh, talked about, you can hear different versions of it and every single time it's gonna be uh, a slight different with the other one. So that's number one. Number two, how do you, how do you study? Um, for concept questions, it's exactly like your quizzes, okay? So the format is exactly like quizzes, multiple choice, fill in the blanks, and things like that. Don't uh, write proper English. When I mean proper English, it says when something is and you're filling the blank, don't put S after that because it's not plural, <laughs> okay? Things like that, right? Like write something that makes sense. Don't over-explain. Oh, no, don't over-explain. Just write the names of stuff. Obviously, afterwards, are, I'll open like the quizzes. You're going to see your answers. You go through the concept questions. If you have small misspelling thingies, you can contact me and I'm going to give you your mark anyway. Okay? Well, so keep that in mind, number one. Number two, you're going to have walkthroughs like exactly what you had in your quizzes. You had walkthroughs in your quizzes, right? Exactly like that. So pinpoint small little things that I want to see if you understand how they work. I'll put small walkthroughs that has uh, specific answers, one, two letter answers showing, that's all. Okay, so that's the walkthroughs. Uh, you're gonna have short programming questions, which is I'll give you a piece of code, and in that piece of code, one part is missing. I'll give you a class and I say overload, uh, operator needed so this part of code works. You look at it, you see the object is being used with a plus operator. So you know that plus operator must be overloaded. Then you overload that the way it works and it's fine. Okay? So small pieces. So, so I'll give you a piece of code and I ask you to do something for, on that code for me. Add one feature to it to pinpoint exactly what I want. Okay? Like for example, I uh, Create a class that that class has uh, uh, a character pointer in it, and then I instantiate that class, set it equal to a character string, and I say create the proper constructor so this works. Obviously, assignment at the moment of creation is one argument constructor, therefore you get the one argument constructor, and because that's a character pointer, you have to do dynamic memory allocation and allocate it, something like that. So. It's like that. Pinpoint small little things to, to, for me to see if you understand specific concepts or not, okay? And possibly, I'm going to ask you to write a full program, but very simple one. To see, when I say a full program, I'm going to write, uh, um, create a, a class that does this and that. Very small little thing, just to see if you know how to create the header file, so you're going to say, this is the content of header file, you, you put the safeguards properly, things like that, and, and, but it doesn't have to compile. But it should be written as if you wanted to compile it. Okay? The one that I'm giving you and I'm asking you to write only the constructor for me or only the operator for me or overload something so it prints something for me, if I ask stuff like that, you don't have to be precise. If something's missing, a semicolon is missing, or you misspelled C out and you wrote B out, I'm not going to reduce mark for that because what's important for me is to see if you understand the logic. Okay? I don't care if you exactly write something that is perfectly correct. Nobody writes anything that is perfect the first time. It's impossible. I, you see, I make mistakes all the time. So I don't expect you to do so, to, to be perfect. Um, so correct logic is perfect for me. Two things is going to cost you the whole mark. You get zero. Number one, if you do not give me the answer properly, 
which means it's not properly intended, it's nicely set up, and you, didn't, you don't submit your code properly. You had a demo test already. I'm going to open it up just to remember that you open the Notepad++ at right side, you write the code over there, you copy and paste it, you insert the code snippet so it's organized. If I see some garbage over there and with spaces and it's not indented properly, I won't mark it. Okay? You, it's two semesters that you're programming. Now, by now, you need, you should know how to write a clean code. I'm not asking a correct code, I'm just asking a clean code. That's number one. So if you give me something that is properly formatted, you put a dot, I'll give you a mark for that. Okay? Anything you write gets marked. Partial marks for everything. But if you give me one thing, everything stick to the left side, and I have to try to find out where the for loop begins and where it ends, I'm not going to mark that. I'm not going to waste my time. It has to be indented properly and submitted using the code snippet feature so it's syntax highlighted for me. That's number one. Number two, the answer of your question, uh, the answer you give must be the answer to the question. If I ask you to create a class for an employee, you give me a class for a student that is perfect, you get zero. Okay? You should answer the question. If I told you create an operator plus and you give me a perfect insertion operator, you get zero. It must answer the question, okay? So this prevents copying from reference sheet because you're allowed to bring the reference sheet with you. Uh, one page? Uh, 50 pages. One page. <laughs> one page. <laughs> one page, double-sided, do whatever you want to do. And you have to have your name on it and you give it to me at the end. That's the, and even if you don't want to have a say, reference sheet, you must bring a reference sheet because that's your signature that you attended the test. Okay, so you bring a, a paper, you have your name, student number, everything on it, and you're going to say reference sheet. It's going to be in detail, you will see it. I'll, I'll give you the posting, so you're going to see. You need to bring a reference sheet and give it to me, okay? One letter size, double-sided, you can write, you can print, you can print with size, font size 4 and look at it with a magnifier. <laughs> it doesn't matter, okay? I've been a teacher for 20-something years. The person who writes their own reference sheet never uses it. And the most stupid person is to get someone else's reference sheet. Because you're gonna, you have 45 seconds to answer a concept question and you are looking at the reference sheet up and down try to find something. Even if you forget something in your own reference sheet, you know where it was. You go to it and you find it with three seconds. Okay? So, again, write your own reference sheet and start now. Okay? Believe me, you're not going to need it and you're going to get an A+. Yes? We're going to have fill in the blank questions, the multiple choice and the coding questions. You will know. Okay. I haven't designed the test yet. Okay. Right, when I design it, I'll let you know. I know exactly. It's, so it's going to be exactly like your quiz for concept? Okay, I'm not going to ask for any type of explain this and that in English. I hate that. Okay, you're going you're gonna to explain, you're going to write programming for me. That's all. And some walkthroughs. Okay. So we wasted enough time on this. Let's actually, uh, and I was saying to, to review issues. Okay, got it. So for reviews, if you want to find lectures that talk about the same thing from previous semesters. If you want to find lectures that talks about the same thing from previous semester, you go to the organization, click on Fardad's note, Notes Archive, and over there I have semesters of stuff. Click on one, uh, whichever you want. Pick up the topic that you want. Oh, that's a half and half, not that one. Uh, say this one. Come right down over here and find the topic that you want and the, the date over here is up, up there in the notes. So in the notes you can find the same thing. Okay? All right. Okay, so that's that. And how, how do you study uh, for concept the notes that we have on the website? That's concept. Concepts are coming from there. I literally look at the text over there, pick one and I, and I one, take one word out and I'm going to ask you to, to fill it in. Uh, 
Uh, so that's that. For uh, questions, the notes I write. Every note that I write, I literally go to my notes, pick up a program, modify it slightly, that becomes your, your programming question. How do you t practice? You look at the code that I have written, you understand what it does, you set it aside, though you don't look at it. You try to write the exact same thing by yourself and try see if it works. If it worked, you compare and see, see if you have, you have done it correctly. If it didn't work, you set yourself aside. Don't compare the two. You set yourself aside, then look at my code again and try to understand how it works. Put it aside, troubleshoot your, your own. Do not set them out side by side and see why it didn't work. If you do it like this, you know exactly how to program. Okay? And do piece by piece. You don't need to write the entire thing. Are we okay now to this point? All right. So as I was mentioning at the beginning of the sem uh, semester, beginning of the class, I uh, am not going to review the uh, operator overloading today. Go through the recording one more time. Monday is Q&A. Monday you're coming. I'm not going to teach anything on Monday. When you're coming in on Monday, I am yours. Ask question about anything, any part that you did not get and you want it to be reviewed. Anything that you want me to go through it and I'm going to give you a very short, small sample uh, uh, to explain uh, and kind of fix the problems. Okay, so Monday is for you to ask questions about anything that you don't know. The, qu the test is on first five weeks. So what I'm teaching today is not going to be on the test. Okay, first five weeks. What I'm teaching today is not going to be on the test. Any questions before we begin? And I have a question from you. Do you know where is my coffee cup? Oh, there you go. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Questions? It is there. If you, you have to do the prerequisite. If you don't do the prerequisite, so, so, and you got an A in it, right? Yes. So you will see it when the time comes. It, I, I sent a thing that I sent a message that it opens at certain time and time. I'll show. Oh, there is no grade. Of course, it's going to be posted in the, all the grade and everything is going to come up uh, the day that it reveals the answers are revealed. Is this course like 45, 45 percent in my grade or is this going to be? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I'll, I'll take a look at the answers later on and see me online if there's anything wrong with it. Yes. Any quiz that you need to know and you want to review for midterm test, Monday. Monday, that's, that's what I said. Monday, you come, you have any questions, any part that you want, I'll review it for you. When you say review, what do you mean, dear? Oh, I'm never going to say, I'm not going to even tell you how the questions are going to be. It's your responsibility to answer the questions. Any question that I ask, you need to know C++. It doesn't matter what the question is, does it? Does it matter what's the question when you know what C++ is? No. So it really doesn't help. I'll tell you what the format's going to be, like multiple choice and things like that, but what type of questions are going to come, I never talk about it. No. Okay? <clears throat> That's uh, giving the questions away. That's not right to do. But, again, uh, uh, on Monday, by Monday I have designed my test, and I am a very weak person uh, in answering questions. When I, I, the reason that I cannot answer you is that I haven't designed the test yet. But by by, by Monday I have designed it, so you may extract something out of me. <laughs> try, you can try, but uh, and I and I'm uh, and I'm and I'm not very good in keeping secrets, so. <laughs> All right, okay, uh, <clears throat> so let me add the things over here. So 
while I'm doing this, I just want to refresh your mind. Uh, do you remember what inheritance was? When we talked about inheritance, what did we mean by that? Do you remember what inheritance was when I said inheritance? What does it mean? Inheritance means that we uh, have like when we uh, inherit from something. It is you should, you cannot you cannot use the same word to answer no, the description. <laughs> When it's uh, it's pre-designed and we completed to be uh, to make our new program out of it. Uh, right. Can you c clear that thing up a little? What she said. Well, maybe in your own words, it's like the example of the bike and the motorbike. Might bike and the bicycle and a motorcycle. motorcycle. So when you want to explain what is a motorcycle, how do you phrase it in English? You say motorcycle. Uh, a motorcycle is a bike. Is a okay. That was the golden thing. Motorcycle is a bicycle, all right? So when you actually uh, know how to ride a motorcycle, uh, ride, ride, know how to ride a bicycle, balancing on a motorcycle is not going to be trouble. Hmm. You only need to know the handles of the motorcycle. So you already know how to ride a bike, bicycle, therefore riding a motorcycle is easier. But if you don't know how to ride a bicycle, believe me, you don't want to start with a motorcycle, right? That's what it is. Okay, good. So that's that's what we know. And I'm saying BMW is a vehicle, right? Yes. All right. It's, it's an automobile. And I would say Honda is an is an automobile. Tesla is an automobile. If you know how to drive an automobile, does it matter what type? It's an automobile. They all work the same way. You're not going to be comfortable driving it, but you know exactly how to drive it. And after five minutes, it's as if it's your own, right? That's how it works. So if you know what the parent of an object is doing, the children are OK. So the top class that you have, automobile, if you know how to handle an automobile, then a BMW is easy. So different types of an automobile is easy. Are we okay with this? That's my point. You already know how to use C out and C in, correct? So teaching you how to use files will take approximately three minutes, three to five minutes. And I'll take that, I'm gonna teach it to you right now and you'll see, okay? So we're gonna learn how to deal with files. That's the first thing we are gonna talk about today. So today's job is to understand how files work and then understand what classes with resources are and what do we do with them, okay? So number one, please picture all the things we learned about C in and C out. With C out, how to set with, how to left justified, how to right justified, all the good things that we have done with C out. Remember that. Remember all the good things we have done with C in. We can find out if something is valid or not. See, it is going to fail if it doesn't work. We have to clear it and then ignore it. And then ignore up to certain character. With get line, I can get up to a delimiter. With get, I can get up to a delimiter. It will not extract the delimiter. And, and things like that, like extraction operator. Extraction operator skips the leading spaces and then stops at any space that you have, where get line doesn't do that. So all the things about things that we learned about C in, remember that? Now I'm telling you, C, there, there, there is a hierarchy of, uh, uh, there is a hierarchy. Uh, first of all, at the end of the class, please uh, tell me, uh, can you see this? <laughs> now? 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 Is it comfortable? Comfortable? Is there anybody who cannot see this now? Okay. So, as I was saying, there is a, um, a hierarchy of classes in, in C++. Uh, and this hierarchy looks like this. So, we have something sitting at the top. And out of that one, two things are, are inherited. And out of each one of them, one thing is inherited. And out of those two things, one thing is inherited. So it's essentially the inheritance, 
is like this. So from this one goes to that. From this one comes to here. From these two come over here. So whatever I'm going to write over here is a this one. Whatever I'm going to write over here is a this one and is a this one. Whenever I write over here, it's like I'm saying vehicle, automobile, BMW, BMW 320. Okay, it's like I'm saying vehicle, uh, airplane, 747, and I don't know what I can get after that. <laughs> <That's what laughs> but anyway, so it's like that. So I am creating a hierarchy of stuff. So what is this hierarchy? This is what it is. This is called iOS. You have used this, right? iOS left, iOS right. All the things that you put over there is in the master thingy. That's mother of all input and output stuff. And that mother has two daughters. One is called OStream. And the other one is called iStream. Now, OStream and iStream they have two instances that are unique. You cannot create five instances out of them. iStream and OStream, they are not things that you can create instances out of it. They, they, their constructor is private. You cannot create anything out of them. It's impossible. Okay? But they did it somehow. We don't know how in 345 we're going to learn. But they did it somehow, and they made it global. There are two objects that you have access. One is an instance of O. Uh, O stream, we call that object. So the objects that are created, we call this object C out and we call this object C in. So C in, C in is I stream getting instantiated. C out is O stream getting instantiated. Okay? What, this is what they call a singleton. A singleton is. Uh, a class that can have only one instance. You cannot have two out of it. It's a single thing. It's a unique thing. Okay? Why did they do that? Because you cannot have two C outs. You have one terminal. Things are getting printed on it. If two different programs are, if two different functions are doing C out, they have to print on the same thing. One is not printing on one terminal, the other one is, it's only one terminal. Because there is only one terminal, we have only one C out. All right? And the same thing with C in. You have only one keyboard. That's where you are entering the stuff. You don't have three keyboards. It's one. Because it's one, they create a singleton, a C in, that only represents the console input. That's it. And there is no other thing. You cannot, you don't have two of them. And if there are two applications doing C in, they both come from C board, C board, keyboard. Are we okay with this? Are we okay? Then out of these two, they created Two classes, they called this class OFStream and this class IFStream. What are these? This is the exact, so OFStream is an OStream. IFStream is an IFStream, IStream. It means they work exactly like C in and C out. What is the difference? When you print on C out, it goes to the screen. When you print on an OF stream object, it goes to a file. Exactly like C out. No difference. I'll demonstrate. And IF stream, it's reading from a file. Exactly like C in. But the good thing is that you don't have to deal with the stupid user anymore. You don't need to. When you're doing IF stream, you don't need to say, oh, I set the age is 25, uh, maximum 25, you enter 26. You, you don't have that problem. They give you a file, you look at the file, you know exactly what is the format that is coming in, and you write the exact same format that you want to read those things. And if at any case it fails, and I, IF stream fails exactly like C in, then all you need to do is to print an error message saying the data file is corrupted, fix it. Done. You don't do anything else. You give that data file to whoever is supposed creating it, they're going to fix it and give it back to you, and so on and so forth. Okay? So that's that. But how it works, 
Obviously, they created only one instance out of CL, but do I only have one file? No, I can have many files, right? So you can actually instantiate OF stream. You can actually, and by the way, these two are merged together, called something called F stream. F stream is input and output together because you can read from a file and then write into it, right? A file can be read from and written into, correct? Because of that, we have an F stream too. But we don't deal with it. We don't, uh, this is three, four, five. We don't deal with this now, okay? We only do OF stream and IF stream. But the name of the header file, they use this one. It's F stream. So I have to include that at the top. Oh, I have to include that at the top. So in here, I have to say, include F stream. It is in standard thingy. So in here, I'm going to say C out uh, 11 October, uh, October what? October 12th, <clears throat> OOP 244ZAA, right? If I run this program, where that message is going to go? On a screen, correct? And you got to see it's getting printed like that. So see what I'm going to do? I'm going to create a file over here. I'm going to say OF stream, say my file. Now, if you, microphone please, if you were the person who coded OF stream, what would you pass to its constructor? An OF stream is supposed to represent a file. Address of the file? What? No, what? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, don't, don't, don't think C. Oh. So think as if a two-year-old is supposed to use this. Okay. If a two-year-old wants to write in a file, what that two-year-old needs to know about the file? The path of the file. Right? The path of the file, which essentially means the name of the file. Mm. That's all it needs. And they programmed it exactly the same way. So all you need to do past the constructor is the name of the file. Whatever you want. What do you want the name of the file to be? Tell me. Taylor Swift. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously? Taylor Swift? No. Uh, Swifty. Swifty? So how, do you, how do you write Swifty? I cannot believe it. My, I, I'm going to actually put this thing for my daughter. She's 10, 10 years old and she's in love with Taylor Swift. So. so <laughs> It really? Everybody? Okay. Swift, is that correct? IE. IE, like that? Swifty.txt. <laughs> okay? So now my file is called Swifty.txt. I cannot believe I wrote that. Anyways, Swifty.txt. Now, how did I print on C out? I'm just going to copy that. And in here, instead of C out, I'm going to put my file. Done. Do I need to open the file? No. Because it's an object. An object has a constructor. Any sane programmer will open the file in the constructor. Do I need to close the file? No. Because an object has a destructor. Any sane programmer will close the file in a destructor. I don't need to worry about these things. I just use it as if it's C out. And if I run this program, this is the output. Three years later, it's a pop of coffee. Nothing changed. Why? Because the other one went to a file. I'll open the file, and I have swifty.txt over there. And when you look at it, that's the thing in it. No difference. <coughs> Pardon me? C out means my file is an object of file. You do insertion operator into it, it inserts into it. Because, because a file is an O stream and my file is a C out. It works exactly like C out. Okay? If I wanted this, I could do I could do this. I could say my file dot uh how do you put it in things? So I can, I'm going to say my file, 
uh, uh, set f uh, uh, iOS left, right? What else do we do? Like, uh, uh, let's say I want to put that thing in a thing and write justified. So then I'm going to say my file, oh, actually write justified. I'm going to say write. Now I'm going to say dot, uh, so I'm going to first uh, print an, um, an asterisk. Okay. Then I'm going to say my file dot width. Put, I don't know, 50. And I'm going to say now the exact same thing I've done over here. And put an asterisk after. So as you see, if I had C out in here, it would put an asterisk before. In 50 states, it would have right justified that and printed that right and put an asterisk, right? When you run it, that's exactly what happens. So I do not need to teach anything about a file other than in a constructor, create one, and then you're, it's good to go. And remember, every single time it runs, it overrides the old one, OK? If you want it to be opened in some other ways, there is a way, but we don't go that deep now. You can actually tell it to append instead of, instead of creating a new one, which means don't delete the old one, add to the end of the file. You can do that, but we'll talk about it when the time comes. Okay? For now, that's all you need. Open a file and write to it. Are we okay? Now, how do we read from a file? How do we read from a file? All I need to, so let me just, gonna, I'm going to write this thing, a dot, uh, um, writing in a file. And now let's read from a file. <clears throat> so read, all I need to do is to go if stream, correct? Now my file is open for reading. Okay, and I'm going to take everything out in here, and let's have, the first one is 11, right? That's an integer. So I'm going to say int i. <clears throat> I'm going to go my file into i. Read from my file, put it into i. What is in my file? <clears throat> we understand this, right? I can remove this. Can I remove this? Okay, so... Let's remove that, and I'm going to open Swifty thing. <laughs> That's um, anyways. All right. So, are you going to the concert? Uh, next May. Oh, okay. <laughs> wow, you're rich. Oh, I it's it's very. Can, could you please introduce me to your friend? Because <laughs> my daughter wants to go, and I don't have the money. <laughs> Oh, in France, holy. Okay, all right. Okay, good. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, good. You, you'll got to see my daughter over there. Anyway, so, so my file into I, right? What is in my, when you, what is the first thing that is in a file? An integer. So it's going to read the first thing, right? So, um, and what is the next thing over there? It's a dash, right? I don't want the dash, so I'm going to go on my file dot ignore. There you go. The dash is ignored, right? Now I want to read October OCT. Okay? I want to read that. Huh? How do I do that? I need a string, character, uh, month. It's for, for uh, it's, uh, let's actually do the other, do another thing. I'm going to say character date. Okay? And it's, uh, well, I'll put over here 10, whatever. And now I'm going to go my file into date. So first, it's going to read 11. It's going to ignore the dash. Then it's going to read everything up to, because it's extraction operator, it's going to read up to uh, white space, right? So it's going to read up to, read up to white space. 
and uh, date, not that, that data. Okay, so it reads up to that one. Then let's say I want to read only OOP. Okay, so in here I'm going to have character, subject, uh, and it's only three characters. I'll put four in here. And now I need to ignore that one character that is space. So I'm going to say my file dot ignore. And then I'm going to say my file dot get. And get go does, uh, what was the thing in here? It was getting, so it gets a string that is subject, right? And count is three, correct? I read three of them. Uh, does, did this, does this null terminate? It does null terminate, right? We'll find out, okay, if it null terminates or not. So get the subject. So it reads the first three. Now it reaches over here. Now I can get the uh, subject code, right? So I'm going to have another integer over here called code, integer code. Now I'm going to write over here my file into code, okay? So, so I'm going to read right up to here now. As you see, when you know what the file is, you write exactly what you want. There is no stupid user where to enter something wrong for you. And if it fails, it means the file is wrong. Of course, the first time, maybe it's because you wrote it wrong. But when you adjust it and it writes it, then anything that comes in like that, it's going to be read properly. Okay? Usually things are like comma separated. When it's comma separated, you simply do a get line. Get line reads it right up to comma and stops and... Uh, and disposes the comma, right? So you can use get line to read fields out of something if you want to very easily. So, so in here I'm going to say C out uh, session number I, that's the first one, right? Then C out uh, month, no, date, date, and I'm going to put the date, see out, the other one is a subject, uh, put the subject, and the last one, see out, subject, code, and I'm going to put the code. So this, by the way, is called parsing. OK? This, in computer science, is called parsing. You are parsing that statement. It means you are removing its tokens separately and put it in different things so you can uh, process on it. OK? So that's that. So now. Save. So now, uh, let me just run the code step by step so we'll see what happens. So it comes right over here. It prints that one out. We know it's printed. We don't care about the rest. So it reads I. 11 is read. read so that's 11. Now it bypasses the dash, reads the date up to space. So date is October 12th. It's read. Then it's going to skip that one and read the subject. Subject is OO, so it has to be four, not three. Let me fix that. You know what is a good thing about a teacher? I can make a mistake and I don't lose mark. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. <laughs> can you do like slow down and then teach us how to use the, the, the thing? Because that when I'm writing my own code, I want to go through the steps. Click on debug. Everything is taught over there for you. Step into 11, step over 10. Toggle. So what's the difference between step into and step into? If you are at the function, you press F11, it goes inside the function and starts walking through the function. When you say step over, when it's at the function, it executes the function as one statement, poof. So which one do you use? Depending if I want to step into or not. So right now it's step over. Uh, right now it's a step over. All right. So everything's there. Go to debug and you'll see. And you can put a stop sign here, for example. Like, for example, last, I, I, the last time I did it, I went up to subject and it went wrong, right? Mm -hmm. 
Now I'll put a stop sign right over here because I know everything else works properly. I press F5, it runs and stops right at that point. Poof. Now I can continue F10ing and going through, right? Stepping over. So now, as you see, date has the October 12 and stuff and that. Ignore that one. Now I'm going to read that one and subject is now OOP. So that's good. Now I'm going to read the code and code is 244. Now I can print them one by one. One, two, three, four. And this is what I get. Right? Done. That was reading from files. And another amazing thing about uh, inheritance is that if designed properly, you can call objects using their family name. You can call me Mr. Soliman, although I hate it, but you can, right? Right? That's how it is. If you say Mr. Soliman, teach, I'm not going to teach. My father actually was a teacher too. He, he taught mechanics, right? If you say Mr. Soliman, teach, I'm not going to teach mechanics. I'm going to teach C++, right? It's the same thing like here. You can call these objects using their last name, and they will still work, which means if you overloaded something, on a screen, you can pass a file to it, and it gets printed on a, on a file. You don't need to implement anything new. If you cre overload something for OStream, OStream is the family name of OFStream, right? So you can pass an OFStream object to an OStream, and it will still work. Of course, you can have a separate one so they are printed differently. But if you want it to be identical, exactly how it's on a screen, if you want it to go exactly like that to a, uh, to a file, then you don't need to write anything new. Okay? <clears throat> so that's that. Um, we'll come to all these things at a later time, but this is what you needed to know about uh, C in and C out. Same thing, or file in and file out. By the way, it has all those methods. If you specifically want to close it, you can. Like for example, if I want to combine, if I wanted to combine these two, if I wanted to combine these two, let's say I wanted to combine this program and the other program, which means I wanted to have all these things done. <clears throat> so let me just write over here uh, B dash. Uh, reading from a file. <clears throat> if I want to combine these two, which means I want, if I want to have, let me first fix this. If I want to have these things done first, so I want this to be written in a file, So I want to have something like this, <clears throat> okay? If I want to have these things written into a file, and then I want to start re reading it from the file, for whatever reason, okay? I cannot do that now. Because it's open for writing, it's possible that it's not even written. It has to get closed to make sure everything is written in a file. If that's the case, all you need to do is to say my file dot close. So it has the close, but if the close is called it is destructor. If you close it manually, you can. And then <clears throat> you can say if stream my in file and open the exact same file. And use my in file to whatever you want to do. So I'm going to copy. So it has to be a different name, right? Yeah, because this one is an IF stream, that one is an OF stream. If I want to open another file over here, I can go my file dot open. Uh, what do I like? <laughs> uh, anyways, um, uh, something dot txt and go my file 
something is here. I can do that. Because I closed it already, I can open it. Where did I close it? Well, because I closed it, I can open it with a new name. So close and open. And if you put a dot beside it, you're going to see there are hundreds of different things that you're going to learn in future. But it's there. If you, wanna, if, you don't, if you want to open it, you can open it. It has a default constructor. You can create OStream my file and open it later on if you want to. It doesn't matter. Okay? So if I do it now like this, it will work the exact same way. It writes and reads and all the good stuff. Uh, and at the end, if you actually look at it, there's going to be another file called something.txt, which something is in it. Right? Done. We good? Are we okay? All right. Now, remember the label uh, workshop that you created? So this is a very simple version of it. I, I created the label, class label over here. And I created a text that goes inside the label. That's it. It has nothing, no border, schmorder thingy around it. Uh, and as you see, it's all inline. So I'm writing the functions inside the label, apart from one that I think it's the, the constructor of it. Let me see, did I put the constructor here? Let me get my cheat sheet over here. Apart from the constructor that I did not put over there, everything else is inside the... I don't even know why I did that, but it's okay. <clears throat> so, when I'm creating the, and, and C log is to print logs. The reason that I did that, so I can turn it off and on if I want to. So what I can do, I can, uh, if I run it right now, it starts printing logs uh, for me that this happened and that happened. I'll turn it off by going over here and, and making it something like this. So I'm going to say C log, uh, C log dot set state iOS fail bit. This is manually setting the object to fail. So C log didn't do anything wrong. You can do it for C in two, like, if, like when you're overloading something and you want that to actually, uh, the C in to fail manually. You want to put the C in, in a fail state, this is what you can do. So I'm putting C out, C log in a fail state. So these messages won't get printed because C log is failed, okay? But <clears throat> let's come back. And you just, uh, I'll, I just put that one over there and, and I remove it later on to, to show the messages. So I'm gonna go over here, label. L, I'm gonna say, uh, L L L L L L L L L. So that's my lab that's my label. Series of L's in a label, right? So what happens over here is this. I have a default constructor, does nothing, uh, because it's already set to null in the class. It's gonna be null in any case that it's created. So my text safe safe state is null. It's there. I have a constructor that receives a text and sets it. Let me actually bring it in. Let me actually bring it in. I have a constructor that sets it. So it uses the operator equal that I created later to set the text. So the operator equal receives a text, uh, deletes the current one. If the text exists, uh, it uh, uh, allocates the memory, uh, copies the memory. If it's not, it sets the M text to null. So that's the set for the, uh, the operator equal and returns the reference of the current type. So this is my setter function, okay? I reuse that code in here. I reuse that code over here and set, uh, uh, set the text to that one. So it will set it and it's gonna print create it 
which will, it will not right now because I put C, I disabled C log. Uh, the destructor removes the text, deletes the text. That's the setter that we have. I have over here uh, uh, an O string. Oh, a print and a read. Print. Uh, if it's null, not null, it prints the text. If it's not, it prints empty, so it doesn't print anything when it's empty. Uh, read will have 1024 text in here in a local variable, uses get line to get the value, then sets the current object to that one, which means at dynamically allocates and sets everything, essentially calls the operator. So I could have done this instead. Instead of doing that, I could have done uh, operator equal text. Same thing, potatoes, potatoes, right? Setting the text either with this or that, it doesn't make any difference. Same as below. <clears throat> and then I return the iStream reference back. That's the standard reading and writing that we always do. And the overloading, I mentioned, that's exactly what we do. So we simply write iStream and I call the else read and pass the I stream through it. Um, and in here I have uh, uh, extra um, extraction operator that, oh, oh yeah, extraction, op uh, uh, insertion operator. Oh, where is it? Yeah, the insertion operator receives the L and calls the print of uh, label and passes through it. So these are standard. Um, um, there's a problem over here though, um, because of this log printing these things out, printing the object out, the log is printing the object. So I can see what happens. It cannot do this overload because the overload is after the thing. So if I, I don't know if I compile and run it, it will work or not, we'll see. Hopefully it's gonna give me an error and you'll see. So I'll try to run it to just print the label. And it says build, so good. Uh, and it's gonna tell me that, hey, you are trying to print the current object, but this operator is not overloaded. Why? Because the overload is down here, right? So I have to bring the, uh, I have to bring those things up, the uh, prototypes of the function. So I have to come over here and have the prototypes of the function written over there. But do you know about chicken and the egg? Which one comes first? That's the problem now. Because I want to put the prototype up here so it knows how to print this. Problem is that this is, has label in it. It doesn't know what the class label is. If I put it down, label doesn't know what the operator is. If I put it up, operator doesn't know what the label is. Okay, for this, we can actually create a prototype for the class too. A class like a function can have a prototype. The only catch is that unlike a class, unlike a prototype, class doesn't have a signature, which means when you create a prototype for a label, you cannot create it. You can have a reference to it, you can have a pointer to it, that's fine, but you cannot instantiate using that because it doesn't know how. So I can create Right up over here, I can create class label. So it kind of tells to the, to, the, to the compiler, hey, uh, there is a class label coming, don't worry. So it says, okay, it's a reference to a label, so I don't need to create an instantiate, so these two are fine. Then these two says to the compiler, there is a function coming. So there, everything becomes clear. So this prototype for a class in C++ is called forward declaration. Forward declaration. Forward declaration essentially means uh, um, prototype for a class. Yes. So I had a question about forward declaration, and I got that wrong. But like you have, you did learn about many things that I'm going to teach. Is I, I told you. There is absolutely impossible to cover everything. You are responsible to read it before the quiz. You have the notes. The notes are there. Read the notes. Do the quiz. Okay? I'm not going to cover everything. I told, I told you that in a day one. Okay? 
and things uh, that I haven't covered. If you, and I always, that's why at the beginning of the, every class I say, any questions? Which means you read it, you didn't understand, you asked questions. So, <laughs> okay, so that's forward declaration. You know how the quizzes are in the other classes? No, the quizzes are on the next subject, next week. Why do you do that? Because they, the, those professors believe that students should study before they come to class. Oh, you mean not your other class? Like other, I, class. other professors. I don't believe in that. I believe that I rather have an empty. I I rather have an empty brain, to work on, rather than incorrect information and try to fix it. So different professors have different things. So be happy that only forward declaration is not coming. <laughs> All right, anyways, <clears throat> so, so now we have the label. So now if I run this program now, what happens is this. The program runs, just walking through. Oh, and, and I should actually display it. So I'm going to go C out. Uh, I'm going to put over here L. And I'm going to display L and get out, right? So. It comes over here. Uh, this sets the C log to uh, false, which means C log is not going to show anything anymore. It goes, it goes to the constructor. Obviously, before the constructor happens, text becomes null. Now, operator equal is called. It comes over here, deletes the text, which is null. There is no problem. Then if... Uh, uh, the, the one that is coming in is not null, it's going to allocate memory to the size of it plus one, and SDR copy into it, and get out, and therefore my label now will have the text LLL in it. Okay? Then it comes out, and then it goes to the operator overload. Now I'm praying, by the way, I'm pressing F11 now, step into. If I press F10, it prints the whole thing. When I press F11, it goes in it. So it actually goes to the function, you see? All right. Now I'm pressing F11 again to go to print. It goes to print. It checks if it's not null. It's going to print it and put two less than and greater afterwards so we know what is the label, and it comes out. And then right over here, the destructor is called and everything is uh, removed and so on and so forth. Are we okay? Are we good? As you see, no messages got printed, correct? Now, if I comment this and run the program one more time, this is what you're going to get. Created this, that, and removing that. So it prints the messages. The debugging statements go on and off using this. Remember, if you have one C log statement in your assignment, I'll reject it. All the C log stuff must be removed when you are submitting your code for production. Production, in our case, is submitting your code to me. Debugging statements, comments that are for debugging, everything has to be removed. Your code must be clean and nice. Your regular comments, let them be. But if you had a function, you commented the whole thing and wrote another version, remove that comment. Okay? Don't leave garbage in your code. Anyways, so we okay with this? All right? All right. Now, copying happens in two different ways. Copying happens in two different ways. The first way the copying happens is when you are creating an object using the same object. So you write label M is equal to L, something like this. Right? And I can print that thing out too. That's the, the first case of an object being copied. And you've done that many times. Right? So how does the compiler work? Compiler 
works, does the copying like this. My lady over here is doing an amazing work taking a note. Her friends wants it. What happens? Takes it to the Xerox machine, puts it over there as Xerox happens. Okay? When the Xerox happens, does the Xerox machine know English? It just copies it. But when you see the both things, they're identical. How did the Xerox machine co copy? It copies pixel by pixel. It doesn't care what's in there. It could be an image. It could be something written in Chinese, Arabic, English. It doesn't care. Everything gets copied. No matter what's in there, you're going to get an identical copy out of it. Are we OK with this? That's how the compiler does it. When you have two objects that are of same type, compiler doesn't care what's inside. Doesn't care if it has five attributes in there. Doesn't care if it has 50 attributes in there. It takes the first byte of the source, puts it on a first byte on a target. Byte by byte copies everything. Therefore, the result of the left one is identical to the right one. We good with that? That's numero uno, first one. OK, second one. Second one. When I create something like this, and let's say I'm going to put over here an N, OK? The second one is actually to say N is set to L, something like that, OK? And this one is N. We OK? And I'm going to print. You OK with this? All right. So in this case, it's not at the moment of creation. N already has something in it. OK? But compiler doesn't care. Again, byte by byte copies everything from one to another. And the result of left and right is the same. We good? We OK with this? Take a look. So now, when I run it, I have this is created. This is going to get copied. So when I look at M, I see M has LLL in it, correct? It comes over here, creates N. The three are printed, right? And everything is good over here. So this one is the same. N has N and N in it, right? L has LLL in it. After this assignment happens, N has what? LLL, so the copying happened perfectly, correct? Now we're going to go to the destructor. Destructor is going to remove LLL, beautiful, right? Then we go to the destructor of the other one and boom, crash. What the heck just happened? So if I, and if you run this program on matrix, you're going to see segmentation fault, core dumped, okay? What actually means is that you went out of your segment. You did, you did something to a memory that didn't belong to you. Then it get, takes a Xerox copy of this current memory and dumps it on your hard drive so you can go take a look at it and debug it if you want to, okay? So if I run this over here, this is what I'm going to see. You see that? Assertion fail. Why? But it worked properly. The reason is this, ladies and gentlemen. First, let's take a look at the copying over here. First, let's, let's take a look at the copying over here. What happens when I do bad copying? You have the first thing? Forget about the size thingy. The other one only has the data, that is the text, right? So that's dynamic, right? I have M text and the text is outside of the label, right? Then I want to do a copy. So what happens, as I told you, the compiler gets one byte of A, puts it in B. Everything from A is copied to B, correct? But that's outside of B. That is not copied, correct? Now, what happens is that these two are pointing at the same place. So when I print A, it prints that. When I print B, it prints the same thing. I think everything is copied properly. 
when the end of program comes, the destructor of this one deletes the thing, correct? And now the destructor of the second one wants to delete. And that's when it crashes because the memory doesn't belong to it anymore. This is called a class with a resource. Classes with resource are classes that have their data outside of the scope of the class. Now, this is okay. This is just program crashing. Worst is when you do bad assignment. When you do bad assignment, this happens. In bad assignment, you are already pointing to something. When you assign one to another, it copies everything, and you're going to have memory leak. Because now you have a piece of memory that has no handle to get deleted. And then the story continues with the same thing. OK? What we need to do when, one, when I want to do good copying is, it's telling me that 15 minutes I have. Okay, all right, so when I want to do good copying, this is what I need to do. So I have a class, and I want to create the next class, right? When I have to somehow tap into the action of copying and tell to the compiler, don't do the copy, let me do it, because I have resources here. So what I need to do is to first measure the size that I have in here and allocate a memory, then copy everything one by one from the other one into here manually by myself, and copy everything else if I need it, and be done with it. Now I have two objects. One gets deleted, and the other one gets deleted, and life is beautiful. No crash, no memory leak. The same thing happens with assignment. When I want to do good assignment, what do I need to do is to tap into assignment, tell to the compiler, don't do the assignment for me. I'll do it myself. So when the assignment happens, before doing the assignment, I have to first delete the target's data. Then do the exact same thing that I have done with copying with a, func with a constructor and be done with it. So again, no memory leak. Are we OK? So, how do we tap into it? We know already. We've already done it. First of all, I have to close that because that's a crash. And because it's a crash, there we go. So, tapping into assignment. Two seconds. We just learned to do it. Operator overload. We are saying, I have an operator. At left side, I have a label. At right side, I have a label. So, I'll create it. I'm going to say, Operator equal, left side is this object, right side is another label, right hand operator, and it returns a label. Pardon me? No, we did it for a, we did it for, let me just put it underneath that one so we know that we haven't done it. We did it for a regular one for a character string, not for another label, right? So now in here, actually, I can reuse that code. I can simply say uh, return operator equal ro dot m text. That's what it does, right? It deletes the current one, right? It deletes the current one, measures the other one, copies everything, and returns that one, right? So it's exactly that what I want to do. Not only this, take a look at your uh, take a look at your code over here. What do you have? You say assignment at the moment of creation is a call to a one argument constructor, correct? In here, your one argument as constructor is receiving a constant character pointer. That's what we created, right? In here, your constructor receives another label. So I'm going to call, I'm going to do that exactly the same way that I've done this one. So in here, I'm going to say, give me a constructor that has a constant 
label and again I will say operator equal cp.mText why I can do this because every time the object is created mText is null because it's null deleting at the beginning will not cause any trouble so I'm reusing my code now I had an assignment over here but sometimes you don't have this assignment so you write the code of this text thingy inside the operator for uh, the copy assignment and you call that one instead it doesn't make any difference in here I'm calling that so we call this action copy constructor constructor and we call this one copy assignment and together the copy assignment the copy constructor and the destructor we call it rule of three any class that has resources outside of its scope must have these three things implemented otherwise they won't function properly either you have to implement them or you have to restrict their usage if copying is okay for me but assignment is not then I have to write something like this if copying is okay but assignment is not I have to write over here label operator equal const label reference I'm not gonna put any name over there because I want to restrict it I'm gonna say equal to delete by writing something like this by writing something like this I am telling to the compiler and obviously this has to be gone I'm gonna tell to the compiler that hey people are allowed to copy what's going on here expected an expression oh there you go so now as you see compiler will give me an error telling me hey this thing is deleted you cannot do it compiler won't allow you to copy to to assign so you have to implement the rule of three somehow either to restrict or implement so the compiler knows if this action is allowed or not you can do the exact same thing with the constructor instead of implementing it you can write the prototype and write equal to delete either restrict or enable but you have to do it so whenever somebody tells you rule of three what does it mean rule of three means you have to make you have to tell you have to uh, uh, tell to the compiler what happens in these three scenarios in our case right now I am doing the copying so essentially when the program runs now when the program runs oh gosh uh, there you go when the program runs it comes right down to here when the copying happens it goes to the copy constructor first sets it to null and now does the copying properly and then it comes over here when it reaches to assignment operator it goes to the assignment operator and does the assignment copy assignment properly then everything's printed and when we go to the destructor destructor deletes everything properly deleted and deleted and nothing is wrong so essentially I run the program it runs perfectly with no problem rule of three ladies and gentlemen remember that and uh, what we what we can do over here is do something like this right over here um, so in here I had so I can see log it it's a do this and start passing stuff like when you pass uh, a label by value it gets copied without you knowing right created show function or something 
that receives a label by value, you will see that it gets copied. Okay? So you need to uh, go through these things, um, and next day you come in and ask questions. So in here, I'm going to go C log, and I'm going to say copy or assign. Uh, you can leave right now. I'm just going to complete this thing. It's uh, one minute to the thing. Do we have people waiting? No one's here. Good. All right. So in here, I'm just going to add uh, comments to it. If you have to go, you can go. And then uh, uh, put it up. So assigning, assigning this to RO. So just to show you, just to show you what happens when you pass something, just take a look at this. I'm going to go void. I'm going to say show label. And I'm going to pass a label by value. That's why we always say do not pass stuff by value. And in here I'm going to say see out showing showing the label L. Okay? Now if I run the program, what we see over here is simply the label. Oh, I didn't call that label. So in here I'm going to say show, uh, show label, let's say L. L M N. It looks like a function simply showing the labels three times, right? But when I disable the log to show you what happens behind the scene, this is what happens. For every single show that you are doing, copying happens. Oh, copying. Why oh, didn't show the copying? Copying is not showing properly. I'll go ahead. But copy. Shows, remove. Copy, show, remove. Co so you see how much extra work is being done? New objects are created. New objects are deleted. Not a good thing to do. Why the message is not showing properly? Because I'm showing this. I'm saying copying this. It should say copying CP. One more time. This is show. So it shows what is copying. Now, if you just pass this thing, by reference, look at the difference. No copying happens. No extra work happens. All right? So this semester, you have rule of three. OOP 345, we learned rule of five. Two more things to make the copying and assignment more efficient. But that's later. For now, we just want to make sure it doesn't crash on us. Okay, we're going to learn how to make it efficient in 3, 4, 5. Are we good? Ta-da! Okay, please uh, watch the other classes uh, thing for your review because it's almost the same, but some of them are different. So I'm going to ask them to watch yours because you have something they don't have. They have something you don't have. All right? Okay. Uh, sh uh, watch the recording. That's enough. <laughs>